Hello, you are watching Shalom World News. I am Rudy McLennan coming to you from Glasgow, Scotland. Here are the latest headlines from around the world. During his general audience on Wednesday, the Holy Father Pope Francis decried the war in Ukraine and the human lives that are lost. His Holiness prompted a minute to remember the victims of the war. The pontiff said that with war, everything is lost and there is no victory in it. He also invoked the Lord to send the Holy Spirit to make everyone understand that war is a defeat for humanity, adding that making and buying weapons is not the solution to any problem. Separately, the Holy See has come out with the Pope's letter to bishops around the world, inviting them to take part in the consecration of Ukraine and Russia to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. In the letter, the Pope said the Church is urgently called to intercede before God for peace. He also expressed gratitude to the many people who responded to the pontiff's appeal for prayer and fasting, seeking peace in Ukraine. Catholic bishops of Europe and the Conference of European Churches, or CEC, have slammed the Russian invasion of Ukraine. Both the Catholic prelates and the CEC, comprising 114 churches from Orthodox, Protestant and Anglican denominations, came out with a joint statement regarding the war in the Eastern European nation. Citing Pope Francis's encyclical Fratelli Tutti, they reiterated that the core of Christian faith is peace and reconciliation. They said Jesus never promoted violence or intolerance. He openly condemned the use of force to gain power over others. In the statement, they also said that religion cannot be used to justify war. European church leaders appealed to religious and political leaders to do all that is possible to promote dialogue and lasting peace in Eastern Europe. They also thanked the local churches, non-governmental organisations and government authorities for taking care of internally displaced people. Major Archbishop Sviatoslav Shevchuk of the Ukrainian Greek Catholic Church has urged believers to conduct prayers in front of Russian Orthodox cathedrals around the world in order to seek peace in Ukraine. In a video message on March the 23rd, the Major Archbishop praised the recent interfaith meeting outside a Russian Orthodox cathedral in Jerusalem. The top prelate said that Jerusalem and Kiev have a spiritual relationship, adding that the Ukrainian capital was built as a new Jerusalem. He asked that this prayer and movement against war spread to other centres of religious and spiritual life throughout the world. The interreligious event in Jerusalem was hosted by the Interfaith Centre for Sustainable Development and the Elijah Interfaith Institute. It was attended by Latin patriarch Pier Battista Pizzaballa and representatives of the Jewish and Islamic communities and prelates of other denominations. Archbishop Emeritus Cardinal Joseph Zen of Hong Kong has offered prayers for those who died in the air crash in China on March the 21st. Hong Kong's Emeritus Bishop prayed for the 132 people on board the China Eastern Flight 5735 who were presumed to be dead after the aircraft crashed over southern China. In a Twitter message on Tuesday, the Cardinal said that he was praying for all the victims of the crash in China of the flight from Kunming to Canton. May the Lord grant them eternal peace. Separately, on Tuesday, Pope Francis offered his sympathies on the deaths of the travellers of the crash. A telegram conveying the condolences of the pontiff was signed by Vatican Secretary of State Cardinal Pietro Parolin and was addressed to Chinese President Xi Jinping. Idaho has become the latest U.S. state to ban abortion. On Wednesday, March the 23rd, State Governor Brad Little signed the Fetal Heartbeat Preborn Child Protection Act Bill, banning abortion after six weeks of gestation. The Texas-modelled abortion ban allows immediate family members of the fetus to sue the relevant medical professional for terminating a pregnancy after a fetal heartbeat is detected. The new law reportedly expands the fetal heartbeat abortion ban, which was signed into law last year, though it offers exceptions in cases of medical emergency, rape or incest. The law, which comes into effect in 30 days, will penalise the medical professional who terminates a pregnancy, and a lawsuit can be pressed against them even after four years of the abortion. Bill 1309 passed the State House of Representatives and Senate earlier this month. Recently, Florida House Representatives had passed legislation banning abortions after 15 weeks of pregnancy, whereas Tennessee introduced a Texas-style abortion bill on Tuesday. Pro-life supporters in the Australian state of New South Wales are hoping that a recent decision of the UK Parliament to prevent assisted dying in England and Wales will influence the debate over euthanasia in the state parliament this week. Labour Party lawmaker Greg Donnelly, an outspoken voice against euthanasia, 
said the attempt to introduce the legislation in the UK was a shifty move by physician-assisted suicide proponents that tumbled over when it became clear what the relatively small amendment was designed to achieve. The Westminster Parliament's decision was also welcomed by Margaret Somerville of the University of Notre Dame, Australia, who is an authority on the ethics of euthanasia. In the UK Parliament's second chamber, the House of Lords, the proposal was defeated by 179 votes to 145. The University of Notre Dame in USA's Indiana state has announced that Ukrainian Greek Catholic Archbishop Boris Gudziak of the Archiparchy of Philadelphia will deliver the commencement address on May the 15th. Father John Jenkins, CSC, the president of the varsity, said on March the 23rd that they had previously felicitated the Archbishop for his work as the leader of the Ukrainian Catholic University, which is a hub of cultural activity, and for his Christian witness and the formation of a Ukrainian society that is based on human dignity. Father Jenkins said that the students, faculty and staff at Notre Dame have demonstrated continuing solidarity with Ukraine over this past month, and I know that they will benefit from and appreciate heeding the words of Archbishop Gudziak at her graduation celebration in May. During the event, the prelate will receive an honorary degree as well. Hundreds of pro-life supporters assembled at the state capitol in Hartford in USA's Connecticut to take part in the first March for Life. Although the march is traditionally held in Washington DC every year, this year it was decided to hold it in selected state capitals Archbishop Leonard Blair of the Archdiocese of Hartford said that posters saying love life, choose life made clear what brought people together. President of the March for Life, Jean Mancini, addressed the gathering by throwing the question whether attendees would march so that abortion becomes unthinkable, with the crowd answering with a resounding yes. Lawmakers in the state are preparing two House bills. One of them allows doctors to perform abortions, while the other tackles issues that might arise if someone from a state that does not allow abortions comes to Connecticut to undergo the procedure. During his recent visit to Bosnia and Herzegovina, the Vatican Secretary for Relations with States, Archbishop Paul Gallagher, expressed solidarity with the youth, especially young Ukrainians who are oppressed by bombs and fears. His visit began in the capital Sarajevo on March the 17th, with this coming against the backdrop of the 30th anniversary of the establishment of bilateral ties between Bosnia and Herzegovina and the Vatican. The top prelate held talks with his counterpart Bisera Turkovic, during which he reiterated the need to support the legal and social equality of all citizens. They also discussed the war in Ukraine and the plight of refugees. Archbishop Gallagher also offered a mass for peace at the Sarajevo Cathedral on the first day of his four-day visit. He also met President Zelika Svijanovic and received representatives of various Christian denominations and faith communities at the Nunciature. And those are your latest headlines. To join us again tomorrow, in the meantime, you can visit swnews.org for more updates. Shalom.